I'm going to share with you guys uh, concerning a mobile home. Uh, we're probably not going to have a lot of time, so most likely I'm just going to work with you on the MLS. Okay? But let me get into the mobile home MLS uh, data. The reason why I want to show you this is because right now we're working with uh, UpCity and Realtor.com. And uh, I will open this up so that uh, you can see what's available on the MLS. Now, I want to share with you uh, an opportunity that I got from uh, UpCity, even though it's not a big one, but, you know, you just grab any opportunity you can get when you don't have a lot of opportunity, okay? So this one here, let's see here. Uh, let me go to the home page, okay? Now let's go to uh, Matrix uh, Search. Now, on Saturday, I think it was on Saturday, I got a phone call. It was an op city lead, somebody who wants to buy a mobile home in Redwood City for 165000 So when I searched for it, the property is gone. It's already pending. So when the property is gone, it's pending, offer something else for the prospect. So this is what I did. So he said he's looking for $165,000 mobile home in Redwood City. So I called him back. I, well, actually, we were on the phone together. I told him that I, I couldn't find anything available right now, but I'll definitely call him back if I see something that he I think he might like. So what I did was I went into uh, the MLS. I checked on Manufacture Home, which is this one right here. You can see. And I punch in uh, the listing price. I put down 160 to 180. Remember, this is in the thousand, so you don't you don't uh, enter the last three zero. So it's 160 to 180, right? Now looks what pops up. So at least I'm in the budget. Now with the manufacturer home on the uh, MLS listings. Uh, it actually includes all mobile home within California. If I click this one, and I'm looking at the city, you see Postal City? You look at these cities, many of them are actually in Southern Cal California, like Hema, uh, Vela Center, those are all Southern California. San Marcos, right? So I'm looking at this, I'm saying, all right, maybe I'm out of luck on this one. But I go to the uh, second page. Uh, wait a minute, I did see a mobile home. Oh my God, don't tell me it's pending today. But anyway, I was able to see a mobile home and it was in uh, Mountain View. So to my surprise, uh, uh, it actually was still available. So maybe today is no longer available. By that time, it was. So you want to be ready when the caller calls. So you want to open up to this screen and immediately be able to tell the uh, buyer, uh, you know, what's available. Okay. And uh, yeah, apparently uh, that one is gone. So at that time when I search, uh, it was still available. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Yep, it's no longer available. Apologize for that. So, but this is just a way to search for mobile home that meets your uh, client's criteria. Okay. Uh, that's also another lesson learned. I know uh, that was going to be a very hard home. So. Uh, I need to take them uh, to see the property as soon as possible, but uh, they wanted to see it that day, but I wasn't in town, so I wasn't able to show them that property. So I wanted to offer to show them the property to actually today, but today they are also not available. Right now, it looks like it might be pending already, so I am in a little bit of a trouble. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I got to let my uh, prospective buyer know that it's no longer available. But that is manufactured home. I'm going to uh, 
show you how to prepare an offer for a mobile home, which I have not taught you guys before. So I'm going to go into zip form. Now you have to go through the California Association of Realtors portal or else you're going to get a strange screen like the one that I just got. Okay. All right. Now I'm in zip form. Continue. Skip. I created uh, the folder for this particular property. I've already have my buyer's names in here, so I don't have to input it. That was done on Saturday. Okay. Now on the document, uh, where it says uh, all form, you might want to see uh, search for manufacturer home. Okay, manufacturer home purchase agreement. This is what you want to click. So you get an opportunity to submit an offer on a manufactured home. Uh, right here, okay? The first form is always the disclosure, so you know about that one. Now, uh, and you will click buyer, buyer, right? And then here you put Santa Mac Realty Inc. Okay. Now this is actually my, uh, the next entry is actually my license number. So I'm gonna put my license number here. <clears throat> All right, I apologize. I got interrupted by a phone call. Uh, they should know I'm conducting training right now. I don't know why sentiment agents are calling me now at this hour. These are people that don't attend the training and yet they call me while I'm conducting training. Okay, I got buyer, Santa Mac Realty. Uh, I I could actually I should actually uh, go back and see if I can do uh, something I uh, I should have done before. It's called Record Connect or MLS Connect. Okay, now MLS Connect MLS Listing ID. So I should go back here and figure out the MLS uh, ID. Okay, Mountain View. And uh, it's manufacturer home. For some reason, that property is no longer available, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna make up something here just for purpose of uh, illustration. Uh, I don't know what really happened, so I will need to figure it out. That property is already gone. Uh, let me see if I can find the MLS number. I usually go to Redfin, and this is supposed to be number 93. 
Okay. This is the listing that my client was interested in. It still shows active, so I don't know why I couldn't find it earlier. I must have been lucky the other day. And right now it's showing as active, 160,000, and this is a mobile home, okay? So how do I get the MLS number? You get it from here, right? So I will copy this one and paste it, okay, into uh, uh, this right here. So if I paste it right here, I also need to check the right category though. This one has to say manufacture or else I'm not going to find it. Okay. And I say find. Oh, I, I got the wrong MLS. I got to have, a, oh, I do have the, you see, I, 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 even though I got the wrong MLS, I still find it here for whatever reason. Now, if I put a MLS listing, which is this one, and let's see if I still find it. Okay. You see, I don't find it. That's the interesting thing. It was listed in the MLS in Southern California, but not in Northern California. You see how interesting that is. Okay, I got lucky, so... Uh, wait a minute. Oh, manufacture home. Okay, it has to say manufacture home. Okay. Now, if I say find, now I should find it. Okay, I got it. So save this one. Okay. Want to replace? Yes, always say yes. Okay. And then I also need to do records connect. This property says cannot be found. Okay, don't worry about it. But at least I got the listing agent's information here. I don't have to type the listing agent's information. Right? So I got that. And I got this. You see now, see the listing agent's information is auto-populated, so I don't have to type it. That's the important thing of having the MLS connect. It will save you a lot of time. Address everything is populated, right? Uh, I just need to change the date to today's date. Okay. And uh, go to September the 8th. Okay. So I got my buyer's name, but I don't have the seller's name, but don't worry about it. Worry about, let's say I want to make an offer for 160,000, right? And let's say it's a 30 day escrow. So I'll put down 30 days. Uh, so over here, you need to decide whether it's a manufactured home on lease or rented land or a manufactured home to be sold with real property. So that's something that I have to confirm. Usually I check with the listing agent. They have all of the information. So you will either fill out A or fill out B. Now, let's say for example, for purposes of illustration, I picked uh, B, okay? It is being sold like a real property. So, the address is 440 Moffat, M-O-F-F-E-T-T, -F -F right? And uh, it's a number, it's actually space, so usually you put SPC, which stands for space. And the CD is Mountain View, okay? California, whatever the zip code is. In this case, the zip code is 94043. So 94043, that's the zip code. You fill that out, okay? As I said, you got to make the determination. And then uh, on the purchase price uh, allocation, Sometimes there is allocation between manufacturer home and then there's land. If you don't have allocation, don't worry about it. In this case, apparently there isn't any. So I'll skip uh, number two. Additional description. If you know the manufacturer's name, put it down here. Model, put it. Date of manufacturer, put it. Date of first year, put it. Otherwise, skip it and leave it blank. 
And uh, sometimes the property was a personal property and it was converted into real property. In that case, uh, the title and registration would have been surrendered to uh, HCD. Okay. And all of this information would have to be filled out. Otherwise, uh, just leave it like that. That's fine. Initial deposit, usually I put 3%, right? 3% 3 of 160 is uh, 4,800. So 4,800. And it's usually by wire transfer by default. So you leave that blank. And if your buyer uh, is making an all cash offer, so you put down all cash. Otherwise, uh, put down first loan. Okay. In this case, my buyer is making an all cash offer. Uh, they did not mention about sale of buyer's uh, property contingency, so I'll leave that blank. No quad card. None of this applies, so I'll leave it blank. Okay. Usually, the uh, seller will pay for the NHD. So you put down service provider of seller's choice. Okay. And then on uh, 7B, smoke detector you put seller will do will provide. Usually when I represent the buyer, I check everything. But when I represent the seller, it's a different story. So I'm just going to check everything. I'll let them counter me if they don't agree. Escrow and title, because it is in uh, Santa Clara County. Santa Clara County, uh, so you need to find out who's paying for what cost. So I go to my Google Drive. And I find out who's paying for what cost. Who pays what closing cost. So this is something I got from uh, First American. Okay. And I'll go down this chart and I'll look for Santa Clara. You see Santa Clara, seller pays for everything. And Mountain View, there is a transfer fee of uh, $3.30 per 1000 So it is the uh, a fee that is split between buyer and seller. So it should be reflected on my offer. So it says seller pays. So I'll put down seller pays. Okay. Now I so say if it's seller pays, I'll let the sellers uh, pick the escrow. Although I could pick the escrow in title, but uh, maybe uh, I'll put down uh, First American and see what they say. Okay, I prefer. Oh, I don't work with First American anymore. Actually, it should be Chicago title. Now we work with Chicago title. Okay. So, Chicago title on the title and Chicago title on the escrow as well. Okay. And uh, who pay for HCD fees for registration and title document? Now, if applicable, so I'll make the seller pay for it in case you know, it's required. Maybe it's not required. County transfer tax, usually seller pays. City transfer tax is 50-50, so I'll put down a 50-50 split. Okay. And then uh, I don't know if there's an HOA, so I'm going to put down seller pays, if applicable. Okay. Change it to if applicable. All right. Always make the seller pay for the HOA fees. Uh, I don't believe there's any uh, private uh, transfer fees, so I'm just going to leave it blank. 
and uh, home warranty maybe five hundred dollars maximum put down service provider oh you know what this one we we want uh, first American always pick first American for this one for insurance reason I think I explained this one to you before Uh, first American home warranty okay if there's AC put down AC I don't believe there is the rest of it always include the refrigerator all stoves washer and dryer and let the seller counter you the only dis disadvantage about checking washer dryer refrigerator and stove is that sometimes they are so crappy you don't really want them so you don't want to check them in that case otherwise they'll leave everything behind for you it's something that is uh, it's not something that you desire so don't automatically check them un unless you know they are in wo good working conditions uh, the rest is pretty uh, standard so I kind of leave the rest uh, blank all right you don't really need to fill out anything else uh, we just use the default provision Seller's name I can find out later and fill this in. But just to save time, I'm not going to do that for you now. Uh, seller's name, you can go to uh, real list and find out seller's name. Also, some property allows you uh, to do record connect. If you, do, if you were able to do record connect, the seller's name will automatically populate here. Okay. Now, I did the uh, MLS connect. That's why the uh, agent's names are automatically populated here to save me some time. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I think it's worth uh, paying the subscription that way to save you a lot of time. Time is money. Okay, so I'm done with the offer. So I'm just going to save this one. Now, there are a few um, other forms that you might want to consider importing right now. Those are advisory form. For example, manufacturer home advisory addendum. This form here. I don't have time to show you them this form yet, but the manufacturer has its own transfer disclosure statement. You want to import it into your folder just to prepare. Uh, but that's only that's mainly for the listing agent. Buyer's agent don't need to fill out this form. Buyer's agent will simply just sign this form after the seller has completed the transfer disclosure statement. Uh, when you represent the buyer, there may be an advisory form that you might want to have the buyer sign okay let's see what this advisory form is uh, addendum and release so that is an advisory form you want the buyer to sign so you see all the information has been populated to save you a lot of typing time uh, as you can see if i was able to do record connect i would have been able to include the seller's name here but since i couldn't do so a seller's name would have to be inserted by the listing agent at some point okay so this is good so this is a, a form an advisory form and release form that you want to include with your offer so after everything is done you save it okay and then you come over here and do e-sign and the e-sign you click new okay and then uh, you look for the form this three form this two form actually I, i've already filled out the purchase agreement and uh, the addendum so i'm going to click close now since i'm not doing the real e signs i'm not going to click uh, next but it's just a typical step that you have to take to prepare for docusign okay now if i if i click next i'm going to have to click my two buyers and myself and then click close but since I'm not doing it uh, you won't see me do that right now okay 
So I hope this helps and that concludes uh, today's meeting. Thank you so much.